Hello and welcome back to The Commonplace. My name is Autumn and today we are not going to have any fun at all. I'm not actually joking. So today, if you saw the title, I'm talking about two habits that I think every, I mean, every mother who goes on trails with her children, but particularly the Charlotte Mason mom who loves the nature trail with her children, needs to know and make sure are solid with her kids. And here's why, as I'm sure you can guess, we've had yet another encounter with a creepy man on the trail. And this has happened to us periodically throughout my six years of being on the trails with my various children, depending on when they were born. Now I have three young kids on the trail with me and I've never really been shaken by those instances. They don't happen or they weren't happening too frequently before. And so I've been very vocal since I began the commonplace about going to real trails with my kids, parking my car, hiking in, having a great time, spending all day outside. And a lot of the comments back to me or the questions asked of me have been, what about safety or related to safety? And I've kind of always been like, yeah, take your pepper spray, take your pocket knife, be observant, but like you're gonna be fine. So it's been a month since this thing happened and I've not actually been back on the trail. We live in the city, so our trails are dear to us. We treat it like it's our property. We love it. We wanna see it flourish. We wanna take care of it. We're very protective of it. We love sharing it with others. It's like our land in our hearts and minds. And so we are there on average four times a week, if not more during the summer when we don't have formal lessons to take care of. And it's weird that we haven't been there, but as I've been thinking about this over the last month and what happened this time that's maybe made me a little more fearful of going back right now, I realized that there have been two habits that we've had in place for a long time that should be credited with being very helpful in these sorts of moments. Um, of course, I thank God for his protection, first and foremost, absolutely. And part of that protection has been that my kids have responded to these habits very well. And I wanna say at the start that my kids are very common, meaning they listen some of the time and they also don't listen some of the time. So I don't have superstar mythical Charlotte Mason children that are just perfect in obedience because they've been habit trained since birth. Not at all, I have common children and these habits had to be learned over years, practiced when there were low stakes and now they are dependable with them, but I think it's because I don't use them all the time. So let's get going. The first thing is you need to have an SOS call. This is my whistle. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know if my camera does that like beauty influencer thing, but this is my whistle. It looks like a Captain Von Trapp whistle. And since I started The Commonplace, I've been talking about how I whistle for my children on the trail, not because I treat them like dogs, but because I don't like screaming their names throughout the woods. And also it's hard to hear a human voice when you are deep in play and perhaps hiding in a hole or behind a tree that's fallen. Or honestly, if you're a kid who is occasionally really good at ignoring your mom's voice at home, you can be really good at ignoring it in the woods too. So I came up with the whistle idea and I only have two whistle calls. I don't goof around with this. That's part of it working in emergencies is that I don't overuse it in non-emergencies. So the first whistle call is two short whistles and that is the general check-in. That means I can't see you. I need to know where you are or hey, come back. We need to pack up. It's time to leave. Different things like that. That's the normal call, two short whistles one very long whistle so that the kids have time to hear it no matter what they're doing with play or where they're kind of frolicking about through the trees they know it was one whistle they didn't miss the first of the two short ones it's so long it's unquestionable for them and they have to come back to me immediately it is the sos call it could mean hey i saw a huge snake it could mean, hey, there's a creepy man in the woods. Hey, someone got hurt. We have to move fast to the car and get them out of here. Anything that would be emergency level gets the one long whistle. Here's why I use the whistle in these situations, because I do not want to reveal to the creepy men, because yeah, it's always creepy men that make me feel this way on the trails. I don't want to reveal to them that I am feeling unsafe, because if they were to feel that I was starting to amp up and I'm going into mama mode and I'm looking for my kids and I'm trying to gather them and get going, they might act rashly. They may realize the time is running short, whatever it could be. I don't want to reveal to them that I'm getting nervous. So the whistle means I'm not shrilly yelling for my children. I'm not showing panic. I've gone into like action mode. I blow the whistle. They don't know what it means. My kids come straight to me and we start moving. I'm in action mode. 
it's time to go. And something about the whistle for me as well with habit training puts me into like laser focus. I need to get my children to me and I need to get them out safely. So that's the first thing we've worked on. I taught them the whistle calls years ago. We practiced them at low risk times during the summer. I'll be like, hey, let's just review our whistle calls. Go run down the trail, be playing, go climb, be up in a tree, do something fun like that. And let's see when you hear that long whistle, do what relates to the whistle. Either come to me leisurely or yell out where you are, or if it's the SOS whistle, run to me as quickly as you can for your next instruction. And so we practice that. And it's been one of the things that I know has been the most helpful in these situations. Now, the second thing is making sure that my children have a map of the trails in their head. So in every situation we've had, we have needed to get to a public space, whether that be the road, a parking lot, a campground, anything like that as quickly as possible because we've not been able to get back to our trail or get back to our car in a safe manner. And one thing that can be really tricky for moms with young kids is that of course we cannot pick them up and just run. We're not gonna move at a pace that's going to be safe or outrun any sort of creepy man. Instead, we have to be able to be smarter than any one that we meet that creeps us out on the trail. And so with my kids all summer, all year, I will do things like, hey, we're at Horse Trail, I want you to get me to Red Bridge Trail. Hey, I want you to get me to Turtle Leaf. Can you get me to Little Blue? Any of the trails that they know, I will ask them to lead me to them in low risk situations. So they have in their heads a way that all the trails connect. Because again, in these situations, we have had to jump off our trail cut through the woods to get to another one, run down a field to get to the road, different things like that. And yes, those moments can be really scary and you don't want to scare children during those moments because then it may be really difficult to get them to cooperate and listen to you. But one thing that I've noticed is that because my kids have a map in their head, they already know where we're going. If I say we need to get to the road and take the road back, they understand we're gonna have to cut this way and then hop on the road. Last summer, at the end of the summer, right as the school year started, we had a very, very scary situation that included myself along with my three young children sprinting through the woods in our bathing suits with my pocket knife out. And I don't share that to just scare a bunch of moms from going to the trail, but rather to say that it was my five-year-old son who had the idea of how we could cut across a hill, connect to a trail I didn't even remember existed in that moment and get back to our van. And quite literally, my five-year-old pieced that together because he was working it out as we were moving. He knew we needed to get back to the car, we needed to do it in the most public facing way possible and what were the trails we could use. That was singularly incredibly helpful that he has a mind map like his father. But secondly, we've had to do this a couple of times and knowing how to get to public in the fastest way meant that my kids weren't asking, what's happening? Where are we going? Why aren't we on the trail? How do we do this? They, I, they knew what needed to be done because the last thing you wanna do is have a mile hike one way on a trail where you are cut off from your car, you have someone following you down the trail the entire way, that's not the situation you wanna find yourself in. You need to know your trails and you need to know how they connect and how you can get to different places quickly. I did not mean to be a major downer today, but this is something that keeps happening and it's something that moms ask me about and I understand why. And we need to be prepared if we're gonna be on the trail, probably prepared beyond pepper spray and pocket knives if you catch my drift. But um, yeah, we wanna keep our kids safe while also letting them encounter nature and spending time learning from God's beautiful creation and cultivating that sense of wonder that is necessary for any sort of education and any sort of worship. Um, but we have to do it safely because unfortunately, reality is there are creepy men on the trails.